let's look at the basic steps to install Nagios core and get it running on a Linux system. So first I have a server. Um, in order to download and install Nagios core, I need to go to nagios.org. And then there's this link right here to download. So I'm going to download Nagios core. And you scroll down to right here, you download the main package. It wants you to put in name. You can put that in there, or you can skip the downloads directly. And at this point, it will give you the links to download it. So I'm going to download these, this file right here. I save that. I also need the plugins, and the plugins are below. It has a link to the plugins page. And then I can click on this link and download the plugins. All right, so these are now downloaded, and they should be in my downloads directory. So I can go into downloads. I can see these two files here. At this point, I can extract them with a tar command, tar xdf z nagios. And I also need to extract the plugins. All right, so now I have these two files here. In order to build these things, I need to have the GCC library. I need to have P, uh, PHP in order to make it work. And I want to have net SNMP devel installed. So I'll make sure I install those. So I want GCC for my compiler. I need PHP to display the web pages. I want net SNMP devel because that's kind of a useful one. So I'll install all these three packages. Now, if you don't do SNMP, then you probably don't need the net SNMP develop. And if you, well, you'll need those, the other ones. All right. So then it builds it. And all I was missing was PHP because everything else was already installed in my system. So it's installing PHP. And now I have these packages here ready to go. So I go into the Nagios directory. And I need to first run the configure program. The configure program looks at my system, figures out what's on my system, and it will um, make a file called a make file that lists all the packages that need to be built based on how my system is configured. So I do make all now with this make file, which can only be run after the configure file or the configure program successfully completes. Make all will then go and build all the components needed to run Nagios on my system. So the make file, in addition to building all the components, will also make it possible for me to do installation of components and, well, get Nagios up and going. So this takes a little bit of time to build everything. So let's wait a moment. And then it's done building everything. Now, nothing has been installed at this point. It is just built. So I have to make without any options. It'll tell me what my options are. And this one's a little bit tricky because you need to make sure you build everything. And then you need to install everything. So you could do a make install. Um, you could also do things like uh, install CGI's, install HTML, full install, and just kind of go through and, and do multiple install things. You want to get everything put in place, and that can take a little bit of time. And Sometimes um, these things, it seems like the make full install would, would do it, but it doesn't actually get everything installed. All right. So at this point, um, I have an Apache server running, and one of the things that's been put in place now is the configuration files for Nagios. So I can go ahead and restart my Nagios, well, restart the Apache service. And you'll notice that over in the uh, Apache directories, etc, um, in the 
conf D directory, there's now a nagios.conf file, which tells it where to find the files it needs in order to run nagios. And I also installed PHP, so I really need to install the Apache web server again to get PHP working. So I restart my HTTPD service. And now Nodjuice is almost ready to go. I want to still get the plugins, so I'll go out of this directory. And you can see there's a plugins directory, so I go in the plugins directory. At this point, because of the net SNMB develop package that was installed, it should be able to build in the SNMP packages as well as the other packages. So I'm going to use the configure program to build all of the make files that I'm going to be using to generate all of my plugins. This goes through and checks the system again, make sure everything's in place. And once this is complete, I can run the make command. So I'm done. It's almost done here. All right, now it has generated all the make files, so I can go ahead and run the make command to make it. So go make. In the traditional way you do make files, you type make, then make all, and then make install, assuming you don't know what to do. And usually there's some kind of description somewhere that lets you know what to do. So let's let this go ahead and run. After all of the packages have been built, I do make all. If there's anything else that needs to be made, it'll make it, and there was nothing here. So I'm going to make install, and it goes ahead and installs things. Now, it put all the plugins in the user local Nagios lib exe c directory. So if I look in that directory, you can see all the plugins that were created, they're all generated. They're nice, clean, they're good. And you can test any one of them if you needed to test them later on if you got to that point. All right, now it's time to go in and configure Nagios. So you need to go into the user local Nagios etc directory. And we'll get started here. So let's clear the screen. Edit in Nagios is the Nagios.cfg file. So I go to nano on the Nagios.cfg file, which is right in here. And I want to scroll down, and most of this stuff is just fine. Um, I'm going to want to uncomment the servers directory because I like to put things directly in the servers directory. So I do one one file for each machine I want to monitor. I'm also going to go ahead and uncomment out the Windows.cfg file. I'm going to modify that one real quick too. So I exit out. And then I go into the objects directory where the windows.cfg file was. Take a look around. And then there's the windows.cfg. So I'm going to edit that one. Now, there's these host definitions. And I don't really care about these host definitions. I'm delete them. But what I do want is the host group. So let's go ahead and delete host definitions, host group. And I want the Windows Servers group. And that's it. The rest of the stuff, I'm just going to delete it all because I don't need it. So all I have in this file is just this host group for the Windows Server. Windows Servers host group. All right. Now I go into my Servers directory. So I don't have the service directory yet, so I need to make for the service directory. And then I go into the service directory. And I want to create one file for each server I want to monitor. So I do nano on my first server. So this would be my server.example.com. So server.cfg. And in this file, you first have to define the host. And the host is um, 
make this a generic host. And the generic host is something to find somewhere else in your configurations. And the host name is server.example.com. Uh, you got an alias server. And we need to have an address. So 10.23.150.1. And the max check jumps the five and our check command for checking to see if my host is actually up is going to be check host alive. alive. And I'm going to put this in the host groups um, Linux servers, which is there. All right, so that's the host. Next, I need to create services. So I'm just going to make a quick little um, SSH one. So do you define service? And you can do multiple services. Um, use and generic service and the generic service I'm going to be monitoring is the SSH service so I need to tell it my host name for this thing I'm going to be using the server dot example dot com if I can type my service description is going to be SSH and the command I'm going to use a check is going to be check SSH. So let's go ahead and use a second service. So I cut all these lines and then uncut them. And I'm going to use this right here to change this to HTTP. And the command I'm going to use for check HTTP is check HTTP. All right. So now I have this right here. At this point, um, I'm ready to copy this file to my client. And it's also copied over to my Windows 7 machine, M7. All right. And so I got three files. They're all exactly the same. I'm going to go edit the client. So this is another Linux client. Just so you can see, you can change this to server client. Change the IP address. And you can go down here and decide what you're going to monitor. So I'm not going to monitor the HTTP service, so I'll take that one out. So all this one's monitoring the client is the SSH service. And then do nano on the Windows 7 machine. Same general thing, except it's instead of being server, it's Win7 as its name. The IP address is dot three. I'm not going to monitor SSH because I don't have SSH. But this one, I'm going to have it monitor my SNMP, so you can get an idea of how that works. Looks so Win7, and this one is going to be SNMP. And for SNMP, you have have to actually pass some variables and the way you pass variables is you use the exclamation point and then you pass the variables minus o sys name dot zero and I could even add the community string if I want public although it will use public as the default normally all right so now this machine is ready to go except I just want to change the host groups to Windows servers because I just enabled that one. All right, now I can restart or start the Nagio service. So I do, um, the first time you do it, you probably want to use the etc init period d um, command. 
So Nagios, you start. After you've done that, um, you can figure out why you have a failure. So let me the stream take a look for a moment. Nigeos has the uh, problem where if you have any typos anywhere, it doesn't work. So I actually did make a typo. So I do nano on server, and you notice that it says check command is check host. Alice, but it's supposed to be alive. So change that and change it on the Windows machine. So don't make typos. All right, then you restart the Nigeo server. And once I've restarted this way, I can use systemctl restart Nagios every time I make a change at this point. And it wants me to reload the daemons. So I will do that. All right. Now it's time to connect up to my server. Um, the only thing I'm missing is that I still need to create a password for myself, and I haven't done that yet. So, um, if you look at the, the etc httpd conf.d file or directory, there is a nagios.cf file in there. You take that one, and there is this thing about authenticating users. So this is the file I want to put my password into. So I'm going to use the HCPASSWD command minus C to create. And I'm going to create a password for um, Nagios admin. And the password is aloha123. Aloha, one, two, three. So I've now created a password for the Nigeus admin. All right, the service should be running, Apache should be running. Now it's time to see if I did everything correctly. So we have a server, example.com slash Nigeus. And it logs in. It sometimes prompts you for a password, but it logged in. I click on the services here and I can see which services are up. I can see that on the client, the SSH service is running. Uh, if you do it too fast, then it won't be running. Um, I can see that the server, HTTP and SSH are both pending. And on the win7example.com, it says it's also pending. Um, it also listed in pink, which probably means that the host is listed as being down. And it's probably down because the ping command doesn't work on this one because I haven't allowed ping through the firewall. Either way, um, at this point, we have Nigeos monitoring things, and it looks like it is working. So it's just time to wait for pending processes to be checked.